Okay, this time we'd like to uh, entertain uh, public comment, please.
South Pulaski and Cape Horn Colony. And uh, so, I mean, I, when I took my family on vacation, it always been a <coughs> budget. Now, people are spending hundreds of dollars just to get, it. you drive a motorhome from down the beachway up to the mountains. I drove my, I thought that I'd be able to take my camper and my truck to Florida for a week in the winter. I bought it in 07. I've taken it twice since 07 because it cost me $500 in gas to get it there. And then when I get there, and then they're going to say, okay, you build, I only paid $207 for the week for camping, and then you're going to throw a tax, and I know it's going to apply to the, to the campers on this, but the bed tax, we keep our price low so that the families can come. And, uh, but with that said, uh, I just, I, I can't see how they can't make it on $140,000. Then you're going to up it to, you know, they're saying about two hundred thousand because you're going to subtract three percent for Montana, three percent out for the town. And one of the questions I did have for the board, Mr. Williams, I know, I know, probably three of y'all know, two of y'all know personally. Mr. Polar, I know he's up through because we're on the same side of the mountain, over there. and uh, I'm not sure I know Mr. Seller, but uh, uh, <coughs> I don't know if y'all have a business where you have to collect this tax. Uh, I'm thinking not. And what happened, here's what I think happened. You got a group of people, and I went to the meeting and asked them, I, I couldn't stay the whole meeting because my dad turned 81 and we are having a birthday party over a bar. So I had to leave. And uh, so I didn't stay for their whole meeting. But here, here's what I envisioned, kind of, uh, just picking up on it. You got a group of people, and they've got, everybody has an agenda. I don't care, I don't care what committee you're on, eventually it's going to boil down to you have some kind of agenda that you're trying to achieve. And you got a group of people over here comes to this group of people and say, hey, we got a great idea and we think that we should pass this on and we could build this great thing, do this great thing and all that. And it all sounds good, but it all boils down to tax and spend. It's tax and spend the more government because I'm sure when it's snowing in February, not going to be too many people going into our nice big new building that we're bought or built to pay because I've already, I've already experienced that. So with that said, the uh, tax and spend, I'm not a big component of that. Um, but if we're going to go that way, if we're going to go that way, then let's raise the millage. Because we're going to have a revaluation in just a couple years. I'm not for that. Let's go ahead and get an alcohol bill passed. Let's get some more taxes in. Let's implement some impact fees. Uh, it's sad. I wish I would have wanted to talk here in Old One. Go over to look on 28. I wish I would have took a camera and each year and took a picture. Because I wish I would have the lake. First year here, it's in no house. My, my understanding on that fund, fund to the latest stage was that that was fortunate at one point. They got traded off. So if I took a picture <coughs> each year to see those houses, one after one after one after one, and this was brought to my attention that one of the people at the church said, well, it's going to have with the, you know, how the road, and I'm like, no, it's not supposed to go to the house the road. We've got the tax report out on the road. But if we took a picture and we had implemented the impact fees, which I'm not for that either, but we're going to jump in and do the taxing. 
you know, let's do it all the way. But I'm not for none of those, and I'm not for big cooking, big taxes. And $140,000 um, is a lot of money for a group of people. I asked for a financial report. Um, they didn't have it quite ready this, this past time. And hopefully, I'll be able to get it to the um, The way I run my business is I want to build another cat. It's all I got is one bed of cat. People want two bed of cat. But I don't have the money to build it. <coughs> I've got a two bed of cat right now. And I don't want, I can't. I can't pass the bill along to the people coming because I don't have enough people coming to get enough money. So it may take me five years. I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way. I'm not going to ask nobody else for no money, unless the Bank of America. And I'm not going to. I'm just going to save the little bit of money that I have until I get enough money to build that cabin. If it takes five years. It takes five years. If it takes ten years. And somewhere along the line, we as a nation, and it has to start with the individuals, and it has to start with your local government, then it has to go to the state government. You've got to say enough is enough where it should start. Thank you. Okay, one last thing. This is my little hat that I break out every once in a while. It's a reminder. I don't know if anybody recognizes it. That's in Rock. That's the Enron package. You can say it was corporate America that did that. But no, it was people. People doing things to other people. And this is just a little, little reminder. Every once in a while I break it out. But thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. That's all right. Let me see if I can't. I'm not going to get both of them. <laughs> Trying to get the comments too. Thank you guys. Now, this sounds like a lot of small potatoes, I guess, in terms of what you guys have been doing with the budget. <laughs> but this is what it's for. Um, I've got a comment that's kind of in two parts. I have a question and then I have a comment after that. Um, last month, um, Alicia Farm from the Health Department came and asked you guys about doing the smoke-free parks and recreation areas, and it barely even got a motion. <laughs> and I guess my question was first, and uh, is is the commissioners that didn't even mention anything? I don't know if I can ask why or you know why a statement wasn't made or what was your decision to not even second the motion. And then I had a comment after it. So I don't know if anybody wanted to answer that. If I remember correctly, we didn't even get a motion. You, you would. Yeah. Commissioner Orr, I think, would have been. All right. Okay. But we didn't get a second. Oh, okay. I know that it did not go. I'll keep in my reason. And it's not because I'm smokers, because I don't want to tell nobody when they're standing outside one day. If somebody's smoking, I don't want somebody pulling around up next to them and you're smoking, you're smoking. They should have walked up there. That's my reason. Any other comment? Okay, well that's fine. And, that, that, and actually, my first reaction immediately after the meeting was, why in the world would they not agree to this request? It's not only a good thing, and they don't even frequent most of these places anyway, so it would matter to you guys, okay? But then I went home to my level-headed husband, who always helps me kind of get through the emotional and get quickly to the rational. And shortly after that, I also read some articles on how our government, in various ways, are putting limits on our individual rights under the guise of health concerns or safety and security. And coincidentally, I then also read a couple of post-apocalyptic sci-fis. And uh, after that, I really I backed off. I said, well, wait a minute. You know, I, I was thinking emotionally with this and not rationally again about this. Um, so by the government constantly making new laws to protect us or keep us healthier, they're actually just chipping away, I feel, at our individual rights. And not only that, but at our own free will to do the right thing on our own. 
Um, now, I understand many folks have lost their ability to do the right thing on their own, but I don't believe it is up to the government to tell us how to behave in everyday life, as you said. Um, however, I do believe that the government does work for the people. And if enough people stand up and st stand forward and ask for a change, especially in a civic matter such as this, that the government should go with what the majority of the citizens desire. Therefore, I'm asking the commissioners if this is better with you guys, you know, how do we go about this? You know, if the citizens, you know, do we the people get a petition up for something like this, or can this be put on an upcoming ballot? I know we're having a ballot coming in November. Is this something that can go to a vote? I guess what I'm saying is that I think it's very important for our citizens to stand up and say this is what we want, and for you to react to that than just one person saying, hey, we want a resolution for you to tell us what to do. So I'm saying if the people say they want it, would you listen to that, and how would we go about that? Well, one thing that I can speak to, and we have council here tonight, uh, with regard to referendum, uh, I, I know that there, there are certain requirements in the state of North Carolina to establish a referendum. I've already heard it spoken of about alcohol sales. This board does not uh, pass or recommend that it comes to a referendum. And those referendums are established by certain things, by, by statute. Uh, in other words, uh, to say that, well, you know, if there's a referendum of the people, then there, as I understand it, Council, that there is a petition process and there are requirements before it become something uh, referendum. Just for calling, looking at the other Lisa asking, where do I go to find out about it? Yeah. I mean, and what particular statutes, or is it, is it through board of elections? Board of elections. Board of elections. Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess that would be your starting place yeah. with that. And, and as far as petitions, we all know that they're really, generally speaking, not worth the paper on because people sign other people's names and kids sign. And so if you're going to do a petition or something like that, you've got to really have the information so that signs where each and every person can be contacted to verify that they're and I'd like to add this, you know, I, I have my preference and, you know, everybody here does. I'm a former smoker. I've been on cigarettes for 13 years in September. And I was part of the school system and they went with that with no smoking. You know, the state legislature has designated, you know, restaurants, bars, and such as that, not being no smoking areas. And, uh, I understand where that's coming from, and I also understand too that our county could have had a two percent cut in insurance <coughs> if we had had a no smoking or cessation. Well, it, it, it's it's the healthy living. It wasn't healthy it's, living. It's, okay, so I may speak on that, but I understand that and the benefits to it, and also being a heart attack survivor, you know, and, and, and looking at it, it has an impact on you about how you're talking. <coughs> But we went through the process here as a board, and I respect everybody on this board and how that goes. But I also respect your question about what can I do now. And I hope that uh, you know you can see that the board of elections will be your jumping off place with regard to that and petition. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. If I may, yes. you, you can entertain a public hearing if you so chose to. And that has nothing to do with being elected or anything else. If you, if you chose, have a public hearing and just listen to them. You know the amount of people that showed up or did not show up. That may be one way that you want to look at that. Right. And that would have to be a decision of this board. Of this board. Not, yes, it is. Not, not the one, but the majority. Right. So that's something of a conversation that you might have later. But, oh, okay, great. That has the end of public comment. Uh, moving with this. And the folks from Cherokee, I appreciate your patience. I Mr. Wish Edwards, you could yes. I have more information about the tobacco proposal that Lisa talked about. Do you want that now or in the discussion? Go right ahead. Okay. Is it going to be short and sweet? Short and sweet, yes. Yeah, it was my understanding that when Alicia came and Melissa last week, that, or last month, that y'all wanted more information from the students and the youth about what they thought about the tobacco uh, regulations at Park Center. So we put this poster board up at the high school, and it was only for students in grades 9 through 12 to um, 
voice their opinion. Sorry. Um, it was for students in grades 9 through 12 to voice their opinions about why Park should be tobacco free in Graham County. And we also distributed surveys to 9 through 12th grade students. We got 177 surveys back just about tobacco use. And um, I have all the numbers. I can email those out. Of, well, maybe not email them. Right. <laughs> maybe that's not a good idea. But I can make copies for everybody if that's something you would like. Um, but to keep it short and sweet, I'll give you the synopsis. Um, 69% of our high school students right now don't smoke, and 71% don't dip or chew. So I think that's, I think we've come a long way with that, because I remember years ago when the majority of our students used some kind of tobacco. So our goal as the health department is to at least maintain those numbers. We would really like to improve those numbers. And part of the Tobacco Free Parks and Recreation is to set that example that, that this is an unusual thing for people to use tobacco. So if you do, you're going to be one of the few. 52%, um, you know, and I, I'm looking at these numbers together that an average of 70% of our students don't use tobacco, but 52% are exposed to tobacco smoke in public places. From a personal standpoint, I have a child with asthma. He's playing, you know, soccer, baseball, whatever's going on at the time. I would like for him to be able to do that in a place where he's not exposed to smoke and doesn't have an asthma attack on the baseball field. Um, only 28% of the students that we surveyed were against tobacco free parks. Most of them were neutral about the subject. Just to, you know, just to be fair about it, most of them were neutral. 28% were, were the ones against it. Um, and from a, Mr. Eller, I know you were concerned about the enforcement of it, somebody coming up and saying you can't smoke here. The way we look at that is, you know, it's not going to be police on the bricks grounds all the time telling people they can't smoke. We would hope that people would regulate that when they see the signs up, oh, I don't need to smoke here, I realize there are kids around playing ball or whatever, and go out to the edge of the field, do what they, whatever they want to do. But we don't want to see people right in the middle of a group of kids who are trying to play ball with a cigarette right beside them. That's the intention behind <coughs> and I know there were some questions last week, or last month, I think, about the board's ability legally to actually pass this. And um, the North Carolina statutes that were put in place, I think it was in 2008, so it was when we moved into the new health department building, allow local governments to regulate tobacco use on all their grounds. One of the things we are. The majority of school kids don't choose. Some of them do. I, I used to smoke. I quit. But I still choose to buy. And the people that are putting this bill are paying for these goods all to have the right do what they want to do. Now that's my opinion in this smoking and cooking. We're putting the bill. Thank you very much, Kristen. Appreciate it. <coughs> I think we've heard full gambit, you know, individual rights and uh, everything else. So we we went and we looked at that discussion. So I hope you've gotten your answers and I know that you at this time, we'd like to recognize uh, our county manager uh, to deal with the uh, discussion items. Um, some of these are, are already known to the board. We need to have this public forum uh, in regard to uh, these discussions. Mr. Manager. Yes, sir. Uh, personal discussion items. Uh, we got the approval of the senior side change. Uh, this was the both of these items were called to the board.
that is going to be there to uh, confirm the poll. Uh, next on the list is the same. Uh, uh, yes, sir. You, you were already, it was taken care of as a poll. We just had to bring it up in, uh, in the regular meeting. That way, we did do that in the regular meeting. Now, this 2000 was for the We were in budget hearings yes. and we voted on one of those. Okay, okay. This one, the, that was the one you voted on in budget hearing. Okay. The other two were polled prior to that. We had to dig the bank out. Right. We just never did. Okay. Uh, That's right. But you're right, we did that. Yeah, okay. the other one we did. I'll get you straight, excuse me. Sorry about that. There's, there's been a few of those, so it's a little bit easier to get off track. Um, Next is the uh, CDB, CDBG requirement uh, for the Senior Center Monthly Report 10-C-2231 uh, and 12-C-2417 uh, for the, uh, it's a progress report. As required by the, uh, the state and the administrator of this, we have to, uh, within the minutes, to let the board know that the Senior Center is progressing and they're looking to start getting footers uh, this week. <coughs> Let's see, David, I may ask a question of uh, the building inspector more at this point. Uh, the, the issue of compaction is taken actually at the ditch at the bottom of footer? Uh, or is it taken on the surface? Both. Both. We're going to do, we're trying to get compaction on the surface right now. It's turned out on Friday and they have not done it. And we're, they're waiting for it to dry. Yeah. And the people from the range work in and they're going to try to bring it back. Then if it passes, then they'll take the footer and we do the footer there. Okay, great. Thank you very much. All right. Um, next, uh, we have a couple of resolutions for the board to consider. Uh, one was sent out from the uh, the folks at uh, uh, the Parks and Recreation Trust Fund. Um, they are asking for a resolution of support. No. If I may, I did not get that one finished, and I will take the resolution. It was given to me, but I need to break it down and present on the clerk. Yeah. Okay. So that, you know, I asked Jason if that was okay for me to hold that one, and he said it was, so we do not have that one presented. Okay. okay. I, I just saw the head one, Mr. Manager, here. Then. So, there is another one, sir, for y'all to uh, consider. Uh, uh, Sheriff Nick Anderson asked for us to consider a res resolution of adopting a policy for mutual assistance with other law enforcement agencies. Uh, as listed in the resolution, this would allow the sheriff to authorize uh, into arrangements with other law enforcement agencies uh, you know, if the need arises for mutual assistance. I really think he needs to be the one to do that. Steve, what? Sure. I don't have a problem with it, but I think he's he's elected and he's the one that needs to do that. Present the president. He's the one that brought it to me and asked that we have you guys to do it. It's right there. Was there one of the places? Or even one of the places before us? I'm sure it's not that thing. I'm sure in the past, in the past year. I think it's between us, especially between us. I know we have uh, emergency management. Uh, I can't remember for some reason. And I thought we had an arrangement with the uh, Eastern Band. Yeah. There's been a place. I know the Eastern Band. Yeah. And that might be what I want to Is that reasonable? 
Yes, sir. Uh, because, you know, we can go past resolutions all day. You know, <coughs> any, uh, you know, any partnership or anything like that. And I would highly recommend to clerk, if you could, uh, to ask the sheriff if, in fact, he could get that with the surrounding counties. And each of those surrounding counties, in turn, would have to have resolutions uh, to support that. So I don't know which counties, I don't know who is or what. So I could, in right conscience, you know, entertain this tonight. And I'm not trying to be a burner in the saddle. I'm just trying to watch her. Well, I'm proud of the boots. I would say they're joint counties, the ones we actually have. They're joint counties. That's the way we've always done business otherwise, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, and, and I, I appreciate the sheriff looking out for those concerns, but we need to have that as a joint resolution, if that's okay with y'all, and, and bring that back to us. Is there a deadline on any of this? Or? If he was using that, uh, GS 168 288 cooperation between law enforcement agencies, and it just says that guidelines officially adopted by the governing body of the city or county of which he's employed, and subject to any conditions or restrictions included therein. The head of any law enforcement agency may temporar temporarily provide assistance to another agency in enforcing the laws of North Carolina if so requested in writing by the head of the requested agency. All you're saying is you're get, you cover the sheriff under a bond and insurance. Donna, does that, does that sound? You're just saying that it's okay for our sheriff to go into uh, mutual agreements with other sheriffs. Because this says the governing body has to adopt any, uh, yeah, adopt by the governing body of the city or the county. So I'll, what you're saying, what this is, I can put it in there together. That's probably needs to be pretty uniform too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for sure, we need to put it in with the tribe and Swain County because it's the county tribe down here with a magazine and we need to be covered there. That needs to be sure. I think it's in the whole state of North Carolina to be, to be completely honest. And I may not be seeing it, but it, as I understand it, if it's going to be a partnership, I think it should be limited too, because you know, I don't think I, I've never seen anybody in the surrounding counties not a, coming to help. I mean, or yeah, but that's not the point. Okay. They want to be clear. They want to be sure that we want and that they be covered when they come. Okay. All right. But do you feel? Do you agree that a joint resolution would be better though? That we have those agreements. Say with the it's Eastern Bay and say with Cherokee County, yeah, say with the United States. But I mean, the jurisdiction of the of the band though is is, is not restricted, right? No, but they like okay. The All right. They, if, if they if they go help one of our babies, they say this back to call our dispatch and tell them that we are assisting the band, even though they are a station. Without a Mutualized rooms to detect if you have to get to the drive land or the drive off
and I would like to make comment to that right now in, in the form of discussion, is that, you know, if Grant County decides to do further development of the building on the Fort Hill side, of the Fort Montgomery side, we're going to have to have a site study done in archaeology anyway. My, my thinking in that is, is you know, that it, it's important that that, be, that that be identified, and I think it's important to us, too, is that we don't have to go pay that fee. Uh, if we decide to go in to build uh, any, any further on that particular site, is that from what I understand uh, Mr. Holland telling us, uh, TJ, is that, you know, that will already be there. It will be such as a certificate that when it comes to the point in the, in the negotiation for price that we just present that certificate and say that this has already been done. And that's why I was trying to ask him about the scope about how much of that uh, area there would be under study. And what he says to me is you're looking to the Fort Hill uh, from EMS, it'd be that slope that comes down to that area. So that'd be the focus of the study. So we, you know, you respect that, those archeological uh, uh, requirements. And, uh, and I would like to bring to the board that we, we uh, go in favor of doing that, uh, not only for the sake of uh, the, the cost savings, but uh, to be able to, uh, to identify uh, I think it's important. Yes, sir. And if I may, at some point in time, I don't know if you know in town, but they'll have those metal signs that identifies it at the actual place, and that would be wonderful to see up there, too. Yes, sir. Uh, where you've got a lot of people travel around to go see the historical sites, and that would be one on the end, that they could come there and, and see where Fort Montgomery actually existed. Right. And I'm not sure, and I may be, I may be so used to it. I don't know if there's a marker for Junaluska outside of a sign that says the museum's this way. Uh, looks like there'd be a designated. Maybe that's plain, yeah. you know, to be able to uh, have markers that uh, point that out. But I, I think a lot of folks could actually go through Grand County and not realize that. Uh, so, but that's my, that's my two cents. Hmm? Yeah, I know it is. But does anyone the, the, the markers up there? But is there one somewhere? That were more direct. I know there's some that direct people to the museum and such as that, but I think a, a historical marker would be good. Is that my car? Comment? 
All approved. Uplift again. All opposed. Like sign. Okay, and the resolution for the park and rec is uh, to be at a later date. Yes. Okay, so it'll be tabled for now. Uh, also, the resolution for mutual assistance with other law enforcement agencies, and as I understand, that is, uh, at, the sheriff is asking this board uh, permission to go and make those agreements uh, with those grounds. We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion or comments? <coughs> all approved. And all those like sign motion carries. Next is the entertain uh, the uh, presentation made by uh, T.J. Hall with regard to an archaeological grant. And I want to let us be reminded that it will be a grant and it's depending on it being awarded. Yes. Um, so with that, we have a motion that we go ahead and uh, do a letter. You want to do a letter of support? Can we do that? Yes, sir. That's, that's what he requested was a letter of support for support. Okay, we give a letter of support uh, to this activity. Have a motion? Have a motion, we have a second. Okay, okay all approved. A good hand. All those like sign, motion to carry. One more item, it will be the approval of the CBBG monthly report for 10 C 2231 and 12 C 2417. Okay, we've been asked to uh, for a motion for the progress report on the senior center monthly reports of stated. We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? Comment? All approved, all look again, all opposed, like sign. All right, thank you very much. Ms. Clark, does that take care of that? All right, everything else we're taken care of? All right, this time I'm going to ask me to entertain a motion for closed session under GS 143-318.11A136, privilege and confidential information, attorney client privilege, personnel, and, and contracts. And this will be with the good close of BCDI. All right, we have a motion. Second. Can I also entertain that we have a five minute break? All right, we have a motion. Second. All approved. All opposed. 